Okay, we are on YouTube. I'm going to move us to speaker view. I'm going to start recording. Okay, Mr. Pro, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm all set on my end. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. I call the ordinances and rules meeting to order and ask the clerk to take the roll. Councillor Darcy. Present. Councillor Dunn. Present. Councillor Harris. Present. Councillor LeBlanc. Present. Chairman McLaughlin. Present. Mr. Chairman, all members are present, so you have a quorum. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Um, Councilor Harris moves uh, acceptance of the minutes from May 4th, 2020. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Um, if the clerk could read the first new matter. Yes. First new matter is the time extension for order number 33110 for BP 3rd Avenue LLC located at 214 3rd Avenue, 186 through 194 3rd Avenue and 94 4th Avenue. Um, I believe uh, Attorney McCourt, you're here um, on this matter? Correct. Yes, I am. If you can just give us a, um, just a breakdown of, um, of why this is needed. Yes, uh, this uh, special permit was um, okayed a couple of years ago, and uh, we've been seeking a tenant so we could start construction. Also, the building next door uh, got approved at 300 Third Avenue, so we're trying to coordinate the uh, construction, but there's no way we can begin by August 4th, so we are requesting another year's extension uh, to begin construction. And, and uh, also, of course, uh, till August uh, 2022 uh, to complete construction. Questions from the committee? Um, Chair McLaughlin, I have a question. Council LeBlanc. Thank you. Uh, through you to the petition as attorney, uh, what was the date of the original um, special permit? Um, I'm looking here to see. I think it was, uh, do you know Jim, uh, Jim Ward? Uh, 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 I'm sort of racking my brain. Um, I think it was uh, 2019, actually. So, no, no, it was, no, maybe 16 or 17. I mean, I can, I can. It's in your letter, oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's right on the letter. So my apologies. It's August 4, 2014. Oh, okay. That's when it was first approved. Right. 2014. Uh, so this is the, I'm going to imagine the fifth or sixth time extension. Well, so the first one would have run to 2015. So 15 and then 16, 17. This is the fourth or fifth one. Correct. Mm -hmm. which is not uncommon in these uh frankly the the law which only permits the uh, one year extensions um uh doesn't contemplate what it takes to set up and begin one of these uh major buildings so uh, it, it's mm -hmm. uh, very uh, common to extend them like this and do you think um you'll have to do another time extension or you can't uh, predict that well, we can't predict at this point next door, as you might recall, a, a lab building at 300 uh, 3rd Avenue was approved. I hear that they may be starting. That would mean there'd be some road work and mutual work that would get done down at the end of 3rd Avenue. So uh, they'll probably, uh, if once they get underway and we hope to have a tenant, we, we could uh, actually start before August of uh, uh, 2021. But we couldn't be absolutely sure of that. Mm -hmm. Right, and I, I know that, I know that uh, this is Jim Ward, by the way. Um, I know Boston Properties is actively seeking tenants and they, they've had some uh, good leads and had proceeded on some 
letters of intent that just didn't come through. And uh, I know that they're also uh, diligently working on like construction drawings and things like that, hoping that a tenant does come and they can sign them up and then start going. But it's, uh, as you might guess, a significant capital outlay. So <clears throat> it's, it's uh, difficult to do something like that on spec. Understood. Um, that's the extent of my questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Hey, Council LeBlanc, um, any other questions? What is the wish of the committee? I move approval and I would, um, I'd move approval. Uh, Council LeBlanc moves approval. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The eyes have it. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it very thank much. You. Thank you, Mr. Thanks. Ward. Bye. Uh, Councillor Harris uh, moves to take the February 24th, 2020 matter convenience food store at gas station parking requirements from the table. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Um, this was just some background. Um, we had had um, uh, looking to clean up some language. Uh, we worked with the law department on this. Um, what we have before us is is uh, their opinion, their draft language, um, and um, we're looking to put this back out to council uh, for next week. Um, any questions, comments? What is the wish of the committee on this matter? So, um, through you, Mr. Chairman. So Come we did ahead. get our, th thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is it, is attorney Azadi here for this matter? No, she, well, uh, no, the, the, uh, Council of Blank had requested attorney Azadi come in for the, uh, 1017, 1025 Main Street. Okay. So, I mean, based, I wasn't sure. So thank you for clarifying. So, I mean, based on this, I mean, there's really, I mean, there's no, no opposing opinion. I mean, I, I don't know what the wish of this committee is, but, um, you know, I, I'm inclined to make a motion to approve and send it to the full council. Councilor Harris uh, moves approval on this. Um, any other comments or questions? Uh, question, Mr. Chairman. Can I ask a question about what the motion is, Mr. Chairman? Um, we, we have this matter on the docket from uh, 224 and it's to, send, it's to send this back out to council for approval. So which, I mean, are you amending the draft to include any, no. Okay, so you're, ju you're just, the yes. matter that's before us, we're moving. Yep. Right. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Clerk. Councilor McLaughlin, I mean. Um, Councilor Blank. Chairman McLaughlin, um, question now, this is the referencing the parking at the fuel pumps, correct? Uh, that was That was part of it, yeah. Now that, that that was actually um, what I'm sorry. That was one of the I think that was one of the the things that triggered this discussion. And with the approval of this, um, is our existing um, our existing. Um, gas stations exempt or would you say grandfathered in um, to this? Are they excluded from what we are doing? It's my understanding that this doesn't reach back and affect those. I mean, you could, we could, if you wanted to, she's not here for this matter, but we could direct that question to um, Attorney Azadi if you wanted to. Um, I would, yeah, I would just like to be sure we're not going to affect existing um, gas stations with this ordinance change. Okay. Attorney with, respect, with respect to the existing gas stations, 
if they don't comply with it, they would be considered uh, pre-existing non-conforming uses. Though I would note that it's my understanding that the building inspector has been interpreting the ordinance all along as not including spaces at the gas station pumps as parking spaces. So it's this is really a clarification rather than a change to the ordinance. Does that answer your question, Council Mike? Yeah, that answers my question. So as long as that's stated in there, then I have uh, no further issues. Thank you, Attorney Azadi. Thank you, Council LeBlanc. The motion on the table is um, to send this out to Council. Uh, any other questions or comments? Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, thank you. Um, Thank you. So, um, if the clerk could read the tabled matter that we have, we actually have Attorney Azadi in here for. Yes. Uh, special permit for the Davis companies at 1017, 1019 Main Street and 1025, 1075 Main Street. Uh, for a floor area ratio of 1.09. Uh, Council of Blank moves to hear from off committee members. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes aye. have. Uh, Attorney Azadi, thank you for being here. Um, Council of Blank. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And thank you very much, Attorney Azadi, for coming in and answering some questions. Um, one of my questions on this that I couldn't seem to get great clarification on is, so they have an existing special permit that has an existing um, remote parking lot next door that is attached to the special permit. And they did purchased um, the old auto parts store, Long Gaze Auto Parts. Um, and from what I understand, they are going seeking to merge the lots and passing off the other lot, um, which would then have a separate use. And my question is, um, and I don't want to put words in the um, attorney Connor's mouth, but I believe he was seeking this as one motion to uh, merge a lot and passing off the lot at the same time. Um, and my question is, can we merge the lot without breaking off the other lot? And by merging the lots, they would be able to get increased parking over if they did not merge the lots, because if they, if it's a separate lot, they would have to adhere to the setbacks. Um, so they'd have reduced parking as opposed to if they merged the lots. Um, to, and I hope I stated my question clearly. Okay. Um, if you've looked at the memos I've submitted previously, you know, while you're referencing a petitioner, there are actually two different petitioners. One owns the lot on which the building is located and also is the owner of the existing remote parking lot. There's a completely separate entity that owns the former East Side motoring lot, which is 1017 to 1019. And that's what's presenting, I think, the main issue, which is that the FAR is calculated for a lot and merging lots requires commonality of ownership, which doesn't exist here. So your opinion is they cannot, uh, and if it is the same owner and it's just either in different, held in different entities, do they have to redo the title to hold it in the same entity? Is that what you're stating? I haven't pre been presented with anything that indicates that they are the same entity. As, as I indicated, I've seen only documents indicating there are two separate entities. Okay, thank you very much, Attorney Azadi. Um, through you to the petitioner's attorney, 
Mr. Chairman, um, is this owned by separate entities? Attorney Connors? So I think I tried to address this uh, in written statements um, as well as uh, at the meeting on May 4th. Um, the Davis Companies is our client and they hold all ownership to all ent entities for the properties that we're talking about. Uh, the way that they uh, purchase them is at different times. And uh, for that reason, they set up different entities. The way they run their business, that's just how it's done. But I think it can be seen that uh, they all have the same interest in that after buying, uh, what you referred to as Lorenzo Alonji's lot, uh, they knocked down the building and have made a, a you know, a significant investment and improvement to uh, the aesthetics of the site. Um, this is not uncommon. And um, in the law department opinion, uh, it noted uh, at the last part, and I, this is, you asked this Council of LeBlanc specific question, uh, it, it addressed condition number 14. Uh, and it said that we would have to do that. And we agree. Uh, that prior to an ANR from the Board of Survey and Planning, uh, that the lots will be held in one ownership, the two separate, so that then they can merge together. Um, that that's a condition that we have in the proposed order for the special permit. Um, but many times people propose things, and sometimes they don't go through. So you don't change ownership. For instance, for the Merck, there was a number of properties, obviously, that they made that four acre site in the middle of uh, the city. Everybody I think on uh, this call tonight remembers distinct properties there. Uh, my father had offices at number one Moody and number 55 Moody. I was in the buildings many different times. Uh, those were under different ownership for Northland put them together. But uh, in the end, what, what needed to be done was combine the lots uh, pursuant to the special permit and then with the one lot, that's how the FAR uh, was figured out. So similar to this circumstance here. Thank you very much, Attorney Connors, for um, giving us a good explanation of that. Um, so through you back to Attorney Azadi, if they did have it in the same entity prior, like Attorney Connors stated, um, is it possible or legal to merge the lots into one lot without passing off the other lot. So are you asking if there is as a condition of the special permit, a requirement that the property, the 1017, 1019 Main Street and 1025, 1075 Main Street properties be merged into single ownership? You're asking if they can then eliminate the 995 Main Street remote lot from the special permit? Um, no, my question is without passing off the other lot, um, the old restaurant, the remote parking lot, if they were to keep that attached to the special permit, are they able to merge the two lots together, East Side Motors, and the larger parcel. They able to merge that without separating the other lot. When you say without separating the other lot, I, I, I'm not sure I understand exactly what you mean, but under the current special permit, 995 is required for the parking for the building as an amendment to a special permit for 1025 to 1075 you could require that they continue to have that parking. You're not, you're not required to give that up if, if I'm understanding what it is that you'd like to do. Yes, they, so they can merge the two lots together without separating the 990 lot off. Without eliminating 995 from the requirements of the special permit, yes. Excellent. Thank you very much, Attorney Azadi. I have no further questions, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilman Blank. <clears throat> Other questions, comments?
what is the wish of the committee? Mr. Chairman, through you to Attorney Connors. Council. Um, the, the petition in front of us is to do um, both of those, uh, which is to merge one and pass it off the other. Would they be amenable to just merging the two lots at this time? Uh, so I just want to. Uh agree with how attorney uh, Azadi uh, stated it and just I'll just add some years just to give a little more detail once again the currently there's a 2017 special permit from the city council now the city council is a special permit granting authority for floor area ratio separately there's a 1998 special permit for remote parking which in the city of Waltham the board of Sur the I'm sorry the board of appeals grant so the 2017 special permit has a condition um, including those parking lot, parking spaces on the remote lot at 995 uh, due to the fact that there was previously the 1998 special permit granted. I mentioned last time, one of the findings for granting that zoning relief, which is under section 5.8 which allows for parking in the same zone within 600 feet of the locus uh, if it's not available on the locus. Now, the very purpose of purchasing and what the petition in front of you here uh, tonight is and has been since uh, last, last year is to create parking on the locus so we would no longer uh, not have required, we would have required zoning on locus uh, thus, the special permit that was granted on the remote lot, uh, potentially there, there wouldn't be a need for anymore. Um, so I can circle back with, uh, uh, with, the, with the client, but needless to say, uh, there's been, uh, they purchased the, the building at 1025 Main Street uh, about four, almost four years ago now. Uh, for over $50 million. Uh, they purchased the, the lot previously owned by Lorenzo Alonji for $1.25 million. Uh, they knocked that down, they put in the sod. With this comes closing of uh, the driveway openings at the former site owned by Lorenzo Alonji, uh, uh, drainage there as well. So there's a number of investments that are going on here. Um, and it, in what it ultimately is to do is to, to be able to market uh, the property to higher end users. There's, there's a large uh, section of the building that's currently vacant. Uh, they're, they're actively marketing that uh, space. Uh, and obviously if they have a higher end user, uh, it, it results in uh, greater value to the building, greater tax dollars to the city, uh, which I, I think is a, appreciated by all. Um, so I can circle back with the client, but like I said, the, the, the petition in front of you the, uh, was to bring parking on site. It's, it's currently as it's, uh, you know, it's a beautiful day today, um, but we just came through a long winter, a long New England winter and uh, crossing the street uh, with your lunch for the day, uh, your laptop or whatever the case may be, uh, can be difficult many days, especially in the winter. Uh, this takes that away. So it's, it's more attractive to uh, people looking to lease the space to know that the parking's uh, on the property. And since there will be uh, required parking on site being from Lunda to Prospect Hill Road, um, I, don't, I don't see that the, the city's uh, Why, why the, it would be a condition of the special permit uh, to include excess parking now. Um, so I can circle back, but I would- oh, Sorry, good. Attorney Conn is finished, I'm sorry. 
that that is not something that that I, that I have the authority to move forward with tonight. And uh, as I stated, it it's obviously not what was put forth in the petition. Um, and I would hope that uh, this consideration made to the substantial uh, investments made consistently. Uh, for, for many decades by the Davis companies, but here at this property, uh, like I said, numerous occasions over the last five years uh, to uh, better the site, better the building. Uh, once again, I, there was some confusion. The 2017 special permit, a 5,000, less than 5,000 square foot lobby was put on, uh, but there wasn't new space added in that. So it was a betterment uh, to attract for multi-tenant use where it used to be the, the, the uh, Bank of America building, Bay Bank building before that. So I just hope those those things are taken into consideration. Uh, Council LeBlanc, you still have the floor. I just wanna, in, in our virtual meetings, I can't acknowledge when I see somebody raising their hand. The Ward 1 counselor is sitting in on this meeting. I do see him raising his hand and I will get to him after, uh, after you. Thank you, Council LeBlanc. Um, thank you, still you very much, Chairman McLaughlin. Um, Attorney Connors, and thank you. I, I can certainly respect the investments that the Davis partners are making. Um, I was here and supported the special permit in the front in 2017 uh, when they, you know, basically beautified the vestibule. And I think they added in um, some restaurant features in the internal of the building. And I can certainly respect the fact that they want to add the, they, you know, bought that building that was an eyesore in front of theirs portion and they want to merge the lots and add parking on site. Um, it's a very large building, you know, on Main Street does generate some traffic. We do have some traffic and some little storefronts in the area. And I feel if it's passing off and we end up with another, you know, three story building there with some more apartments um, that, it'll be more congested and negatively impacted, but I can, I certainly understand, you know, what they, their intent in, you know, creating the additional parking. Um, I can understand that. I just, it's, it's separating off the other lot for potential sale for, you know, another three-story building in the downtown. I just, it, it doesn't sit well with me, but thank you much respect. And uh, I yield the floor, Chairman McLaughlin. Any other questions from committee members? Uh, off committee, Councilor LaFosse. Uh, good evening. Um, been listening to this a few times now where, you know, the, the 1025, 1075 is in my ward, be it at the very corner. Um, I do see the value that they're presenting with merging the two lots. Um, the last three, four months, our city's experienced a lot of downturn with COVID. Um, I do see the advantages to our city um, with the ability of attracting high-end clients to get more tax revenue into the city. So I am definitely, as far as the Ward 1 counselor, in favor uh, of the merger to make that parking lot one, um, you know, I really don't have, I, I, I would like to see, in my opinion, I'd like to see the parking lot across the street remain, but I'll leave that to the committee. I just want to express my support of merging the two parcels um, and making it the one, the one parking lot. That is all, thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Other questions or comments? I, I, I guess I just would like to add, it did come up once in December prior to this has had two public hearings is that uh, we, we did pass on uh, in December an appraisal for the property. Uh, and uh, my client, uh, our client would consider a friendly taking uh, that's been passed on uh, to the mayor's office and the idea that uh, real estate matters start with uh, the mayor's office. Um, so uh, we haven't heard much back on that matter. Um, as far as uh, Council LeBlanc referencing apartments, that has uh, not at all been, been mentioned. I, I'm not saying that he 
he said that, but he, he did bring up the fact that, that that's not needed at the site. Uh, that's not in front of the council. Uh, obviously it's been used as parking and uh, just, just to amplify that point, uh, we've offered uh, the proper property uh, as part of a friendly taking for less than, uh, you know, what the, what the uh, appraised, what the appraised value is. Thank you, Attorney Connors. Chairman McLaughlin. Uh, Councilor Harris. Thank you very much. Three or two, Attorney Connors. Good evening. Good evening. Um, can you just help us understand, I guess, how long has this been before us? Can we talk through timeline and trajectory? And then I want to understand the impact in your timeline for this decision. So um, how, how long has this been before us? Um, so roughly one year ago, we had the uh, public hearing. Uh, we went off to the law department in the middle of June last year. Sean, do you have the exact date on June, June 10th? Uh, we had our public hearing, I'm sorry, and June 17th, we went to the law department. Okay, and then let, just so that people understand, because I'm, I'm sure anybody listening from home is like, you know, what is this really all about, right? And I, I get a lot of these questions the day after these kinds of meetings. So, um, so really, can you just net out for us, like, what is the heart of the matter here? It, it's not the combining of the lots. Um, it's really parsing off the smaller lot that's across the street. I'm just trying to put this in layman's terms so that people can follow along and understand what we're really discussing here. Right, so uh, thank you very much. Um, as I mentioned this in Councilor Blank reference, there was a 2017 special permit and we moved forward with that expeditiously. I think I made mention at the last ordinance and rules committee member, but just as you said, for people at home, uh, for their, uh, just for information, um, in I believe it was November of 2018, uh, they had knocked down the building and, and they actually brought in sod from out of state because that's grass isn't growing uh, that can be transplanted at that point. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, then we move forward uh, and filed, obviously the, the process, you go through the development perspectives prior to being able to file. Um, I have actually Sean Keep of my office here with me, prop, uh, appropriately socially distanced. Uh, so uh, he's just <laughs> in and um, something as to, um, just as far as the timeline goes. Uh, so it, the, we haven't changed what was petitioned. In fact, the, pr the uh, previous ward council when we were in, in 2017 asked if we had tried to uh, purchase the, the land where Lorenzo Alonji was. Uh, so then they went and did this. So uh, I, my client was of the belief that they were doing something that um, that was at the public hearing. That, so that was something that was discussed, that we were moving along uh, in a way that the, the city would uh, be amenable to. Um, like I said, it's an investment of big dollars. Uh, so yeah. we, weren't trying to, we weren't trying to create an issue with the remote parking. We were trying to make the, the property more marketable. Uh, and uh, if it's more marketable, higher end uh, users, which, you know, jobs for, uh, for people in the city and more tax dollars. Uh, for a, higher, a building of higher value. We've seen this time and time again with uh, ideally people go for single tenant users. Like I said, for many years, this was with Bay Bank, Bank of America building. Um, then that just, uh, that tenant has left the area as far as the footprint goes. Um, obviously when they went to Bank of America, they went down South. Uh, so the Davis companies came in uh, saw our uh, building and has, has tried to clean it up. And part of that process in making it uh, the most attractive to the highest end user is to put the bring the parking on site. So by no means is this, like I said, the, the tail wagging the dog, that the end goal here is to free up the site across Prospect Hill Road at 995 Main. Uh, the main goal here is to make the uh, the site at 1025 Main, uh, once the site at 1017 
formerly 1017, 1019 main is included, uh, one parcel uh, that attracts the highest end user. And so is it your, are you currently tenanted, do you have current tenants in the building right now? Yes. Okay. And so is it your, how long are they leased till, you may not know this, but I mean, I guess my, just trying to unpack this and put it back together, right? So we understand how all the pieces fit together and what you're here for tonight is, you know, is there a thought that you could get a better tenant or higher rent by combining these lots? Or is it that the the leaseability, if that's a word, of this building becomes more attractive because parking is on site and people don't have to walk across the street, and it's just overall as a as a package becomes more congruent and contiguous? Can you just further explain that, please? Because I think this is important. Some people might be listening and going like, "What's the big deal? There's lots," but I think it's very important to the decision that needs to be made. Do you mind answering that, Attorney Connors? Through you, Mr. Chair. Yes, once again, and I agree with uh, how you uh, unpacked it, so to speak, uh, that it, it makes it uh, more marketable. I mean, uh, once again, I'd, when you're leasing space, uh, some of the other additions that will go on here will be footpaths uh, that are handicap accessible, uh, ADA accessible on site, you know, uh, from these from this new parking area. Uh, where currently, if, if you're uh, someone that has to be in the remote parking across the way, uh, there's difficulty crossing the road. Um, obviously during rush hour, if people are taking a left coming eastbound on Main, onto Prospect Hill Road, uh, especially the, the last ones trying to take the left before traffic starts coming at them westbound on Main Street, uh, they're gonna be coming and have a pedestrian crossing at a place where uh, many may not expect one. Um, so it, it, it causes a, a safety issue. And our thought was, uh, and part of the, the presentation to uh, the traffic commission during the development prospectus process is uh, that in fact, we would be getting rid of uh, that issue. And that's a pedestrian issue but it's also if you're in your car and you hit the brakes uh, to let a pedestrian cross, but you're, when you're coming off Main Street, if one car behind you uh, tried, you thought you were the last one, they, they really were the last one. Uh, they're trying to get off Main Street to get onto Prospect Hill Road and could be rear-ending you uh, uh, in your car and there's still the potential pedestrian in the road. Uh, so by bringing the parking on site, it's safety and traffic flow in the area is improved. Um, so I, th I think for a number of reasons, it, it's more attractive uh, to tenants. Um, and a as a whole, it, 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 it creates uh, one property from Prospect Hill Road to Lunda. And they're doing this all with no new building being proposed. So, right. So, so we're really, we're really. I think this is an important part of this. Is we're really talking about how you stitch together the parking parcels for better or for worse, based on your total um, floor area ratio and et cetera that drives parking. What you've done is you've acquired land, you tore down a building, you've built parking, and now you want to merge that lot into one lot congruent with the building and one owner. Is that correct? Correct. I, other than I'll just say that the parking will will be built. So uh, on some. Yeah, I know. I, yep. Yeah, you have to you have to get permission before you go ahead correct. and spend yep. more money, right? But your goal. With, with, with that comes other other benefits to the city being drainage improvements there, as well as closing off curb cuts, um, which once again, that's kind of to the traffic flow for pedestrian and vehicular uh, safety in the area. Prior to that, so, I mean, for a long time, it was a parts store across from Main Street Ford. But then when uh, Lorenzo Alonji was in it, he had a very successful business. Uh, and there was yeah. always cars coming in and out there near the Prospect Hill Road intersection. So that's being eliminated, that, that uh, 
traffic, <laughs> not, not hazard, but condition. Yeah, so so let's talk about the betterments in the combining of the lots, and then I want to talk about what you really mean by by you know removing the requirements of this other parking lot and what you intend to do with that parking lot. So, what are some of the other benefits uh, betterments? Excuse me for the area when you intend to combine these lots, because I think it's again it's important to what's in front of us that has been before us for a year. I think we got to net this out. So, so I, I, I believe I hit on a few of them there. Um, yeah. But, but the for vehicular and pedestrian safety in the area, uh, there's two curb cuts being closed that were going into 1017, 1019 main. Uh, in regrading for the the drive, the internal drive aisle for the the parking, um, there'll be drainage improvements. So anything, obviously, Prospect Hill is behind the site, so everything comes down. So there's drainage improvements there uh, to, to obviously treat drainage on site. Um, it's an improvement to that design. Uh, there's no longer the need now for pedestrians because we have now all required parking on site. We no longer would need the remote parking lot and therefore there wouldn't be people, uh, there wouldn't be a need for people to cross uh, by foot uh, over to that parking lot or potentially pump the brakes uh, coming onto Prospect Hill Road. Look left if there's any more parking there before going right. Um, okay. Um, one other thing, are you putting in any other lights or are you putting any money into traffic improvements in the area or have you considered that as part of a condition? Are you uh, doing the, any other improvements? I'm just curious. Is, uh, is it, to address the traffic concerns that have been raised, I think it's important to raise that should in the future something happen with that lot, whether it's acquired or purchased or whatnot, what are the traffic improvements that you're looking to do or have you considered those? Because I think that's always, you know, something that gets discussed and it would just be important to talk about. Yeah, the building was, was in front of the city council in 2017 and uh, floor area ratio, uh, four floor area ratio, and there was an addition of space. Uh, like I said, it was lobby space. Um, that's actually cafeteria, not restaurant space inside. Uh, but with those improvements at that time, um, due to the city council requirements, uh, there was mitigation as to additional square footage. Here, we're not adding any square footage. Uh, so, uh, and, and, and it, as I mentioned, the improvements actually improve traffic in the area. So the whole thing could be seen as an investment as to improving traffic, uh, pedestrian and vehicular. Uh, so no, there is no, um, there's no other traffic mitigation considered because the building's fully mitigated. And, and this wasn't from the past, this is from 2017, from the, from okay. the deep past of three years ago. So we didn't we didn't consider making any general um, funding to the general traffic fund. You know, should um, typically when betterments are like this are done, there's usually a general contribution that is done. So in the future, there's some there's some um, balancing, if you will. I get what you're saying. You're you're saying, hey, uh, I'm combining lots. I'm removing pedestrians from having to cross the street in the middle of traffic. So I don't have any further mitigations, but you know, we always have to have um, updates, you know, timings of lights. I mean, with the new, um, with the new parking that you have there, you know, there, there will be a reconfiguration in traffic. I'm just thinking out loud, like, have you guys thought through that piece of it to see if that's even an opportunity here? I just, I just want to really just talk this thing out and then You've been before us for a year, and I mean, traffic is always an issue. It's expensive. Um, we're always balancing development with public safety, and you know, it is Main Street, right? So we would be foolhardy just to say, ah, we're good on traffic, right? I just, I'm just bringing forward. Was there any consideration whatsoever? I don't think you can fully say that you've mitigated all the traffic just because you've prevented pedestrians from crossing the street. You're, we're still going to have spaces there and there's still going to be traffic and traffic flow and so I guess I'm just asking you know why there wasn't a consideration to 
better benefit the traffic in the area, either help to contribute to a fund to better time lights or paint crosswalks or something, because it is Main Street. I'm just asking the question. I'm not challenging you. I'm just asking. It, it, and, and I appreciate the question. And um, if there had been a long time in between, uh, potentially it may have been more of a, a thought process. Here, we, we, we just mitigated in 2017 uh, where we purchased land, we're adding uh, land, not not building, uh, uh, to the site. Um, and the improvements that are being proposed to help traffic. Furthermore, as I mentioned, they, they purchased the building for over $50 million. They pay annual taxes. Um, and while they do receive city services, uh, those tax dollars obviously also are, are coming in every year uh, to, to be used for improvements. Uh, when they, in 2017 also, the drainage uh, mitigation that I had discussed was also required uh, uh, just a little more westerly on the site. Obviously, what we're talking about now uh, wasn't part of the locus part of it. Uh, it was purchased since that 2017 special permit. So. Um, there's always consideration and, and once again, though, there, there is a significant investment that's been made over, over a number of years uh, consecutively in the recent past by our client um, to, to, to better the, the building. And if this isn't done, uh, you know, what, what could be high-end space with, which brings in high-end jobs uh, could be back-end space, which you know, sometimes results in uh, call centers or, or the like, uh, which I'm not saying there are good jobs there, but there's more traffic associated with that. Yeah, no, I understand. So, and I apologize to have to walk you through this, but I just think it's important to talk about this. So we've heard from several counselors and there's a couple of questions out there, but so again, I just want to ask you, frankly, the reason to separate off that small lot across the street is what? To prevent people from crossing the street? I mean, it, it just, I want to get that on the table and make sure that I've fully understood the motivation for, for the small, separating off that small lot. Yeah, so just as far as the traffic goes, you know, Attorney Keefe, who I mentioned is also present here, just, just wanted to add, and, and I, I wanted to make this this clear that obviously this did go to the traffic commission and mitigation yeah. was considered at that time. Uh, and they and they agreed that it, it did uh, did improve traffic in the area. And one of those reasons is is because there wasn't this foot traffic uh, going to the remote parking lot. So once again, the reason uh, that that would no longer um, be associated with this lot as it currently is for required parking is that we will build the required parking uh, and then some with the redesign uh, to the to the front of the site uh, that's made possible by the purchase uh, for of one of 1017 1019 for 1.25 million dollars and then knocking the building down and uh, like I said the, then we'll continue to uh, agree to drainage mitigation uh, that's already been discussed through the development process prospectus process so, with the engineering department. So, I mean, we're, we're definitely not here to make this harder. And I do agree, you know, in COVID, we've, we've hit a significant uh, blip in the economy and in the impact of everyone's life. And I think we need to be sensitive to that. And um, certainly not a, a pandemics are not predictors of boom towns and economies of the future, right? You only have to look to Japan and things that have happened post the pandemic in those countries to see what's happening. So we're not here to make this difficult. I guess I just want to ask, and maybe the question's already been asked, so I apologize, Attorney Connors, if this is repetitive. In terms of your process, does it make sense to combine the lots that you already have, leave the parking as is, and come back later to separate off that lot? I mean, why does that need to be done all in one fell swoop? And I'm asking this only because, you know, it seems like we're holding up this great progress. We're holding up this great benefit to you, the client, the city. Uh, we definitely want high-end renters and biotech firms. I mean, 
That's where people want to work and where people work, they live, right? So we want that for the city of Waltham. But I guess what I'm trying to understand is we want to separate off the slots so we can combine the two lots. I just want to understand in my, uh, in the governor position that I have as a city councilor, right? I'm not an attorney, I'm just a city councilor. Why are we not combining the two lots and then coming, getting, getting that done, allowing you to move forward in the betterments of what you need to do for your client? And then coming back and considering, excuse me, in consideration, hired, in consideration of then separating off that lot because we'll know the use, you'll know, you know, what what is happening at the site. Because how do you know you won't absolutely need that parking when it's truly in excess? Why not come back then and carve out that lot? I'm just curious because we seem to keep kicking this can around, and I just want to ask the question. Well, it's it's not an insignificant change. Uh, to take away parking spaces. In fact, uh, the city council uh, section 3.552 uh, specifically states that you can't reduce the number of parking spaces under a modification. So it would be a full new city council special permit, which this process is, which I outlined has now been uh, 18 months uh, roughly. Yeah. Uh, and we're not yeah. adding any new building here, uh, but we'd have to go through a similar process uh, in, in what you is being proposed to potentially remove a condition for parking that's not required under the zoning ordinance uh, of, of a, a valuable piece of property uh, on, on Main Street in an area that's seen significant investment across the way, uh, Main Street Ford, uh, the old Bickford site, you know, obviously this seen uh, investments there. Um, so this, this land has value to it. Uh, I think that's evidenced by the fact that uh, the Davis companies purchased 1017, 1019 Main, uh, which when uh, Lorenzo Alonji had purchased it, he, he made that site look better. And then now they're continuing this trend uh, in that area, obviously up the street at, at 1265 Main, uh, much greater things as far as magnitude are being proposed. Um, so I think this area will con continue to uh, hold significant value. Um, and yeah. the, a, a process of, I mean, here we are, like I said, 18 months out. Um, I, yeah. I, don't, I don't know why the facts would be any different, why it would be considered that we'd be able to uh, remove a condition for these parking spaces at that time. So I don't think it's, uh, an extreme ask. Uh, what we've done is try to consolidate a lot uh, more. It's, if it was at the time, like I said, in 98, potentially that was Main Street Ford was still booming. And the, this was a part store across the way. It was a great location. I think for years people tried to buy it, but they said, hey, we have a, we have a great little business giving parts across the street, you know? So uh, that's why it was kind of a leftover lot. Uh, it was obviously a very successful business in its own right. Uh, but once Main Street Ford left, uh, the building fell into disrepair. Uh, and now here we are trying to make the whole lot one piece from Prospect Hill Road uh, to, to Londa. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I appreciate that. So you were asking questions by counselors tonight. So what, what do you on, you know, I know we have some committee work, but would you, is there something that you owe this committee or an answer that you owe back to us? Because I, I don't think we need to go through this again. I think, you know, I, I don't want to necessarily trump anything that's been asked of you. I think you need to take that back. But I do want to, I do want to understand, you know, kind of what, what you need to take back. And then um, one other thing before we, before I wrap up my questions of you and your testimony is, um, what is remaining on the timeline for the special permit? Like what, what's, what's remaining? Like how much time do you have left here if you had to file an extension or file? I mean, what is your shot clock here? Can you just talk about that? Because you've been asked some other questions and I want to, you know, we're headed to potentially a summer session or special session. So I want to understand with summer approaching kind of what your timeline is, what your client's timeline is. And so, um, our current timeline is for this, and I think we've granted seven extensions um, throughout the process. Uh, as I mentioned, we had to have a second public hearing due to the, the election, the turnover, 
Um, so I, so what needs to be done? Uh, from what I've heard tonight, I, I'm going to circle back with my client. I am going to ask that I will obviously bring up uh, the questions that were asked. Uh, I think if if we didn't have the the, the pandemic, potentially I'd uh, I'd have my client uh, along for in council chambers. Um, uh, but that's not possible at this point. Uh, so I, I, I would, but I can say right now I can I can offer another short extension. But at this point, previously granting extensions, we didn't have comments back from the law departments. We hadn't uh, provided or we hadn't provided uh, answers. Uh, the committee had considered it. Uh, now all those things have happened. So uh, as far as I, I would hope that that this this matter comes to an end. Uh, in the next three weeks, uh, as opposed to even at the very end of June. Yeah, I, I, I would I think at the next meeting, uh, hopefully that the, the, the committee has enough information to move at that time. Yeah, I, I would agree with you in your testimony tonight, it's been exemplary. Um, I just wanna ask you, so did, were you asked questions by other counselors on this committee? So what, what do you owe back this committee in two weeks? Because I do believe we are on a clock here. I don't disagree. Uh, I, th I think the, the next matter will, unless it gets uh, handled without committee reference, would just be the time extension uh, and an answer back as far as, uh, I guess, twofold, whether we would consider uh, keeping a condition that would uh, have the remote parking lot still a condition of this special permit. I do want to point out the fact, once again, though, that when the ZBA granted it, one of their findings was that there wasn't parking on Locus. Now there is. So that puts that into question as, as, um, as parking there. Um, and the other thing, would, as, as you brought up, was uh, and any thought for additional mitigation. Um, but one, once again, mitigation was discussed at the traffic commission, but I, I will bring both of those uh, questions to, to my uh, client and uh, have answers for you at the next committee meeting. And our next, thank you, Attorney Connors. You've been, uh, like I said, incredibly informative tonight. I appreciate your patience through this process. Um, I, do, I do believe you've been on a journey and um, I, I appreciate you answering the questions honestly and forthright tonight. Um, thank you, nothing further. Mr. Chairman, when, uh, is our next rules, when is our next rules and ordinances meeting? So that would be uh, two weeks. Um, it just, I, I wanna point out that uh, Attorney Connors mentioned um, he would need to get the extension in this week and get that to the floor. And, and um, just for his edification, I would move um, that um, for approval without committee reference. So we'd be able to, um, to take care of that and then have you come back with any questions, uh, answers to those questions that, um, that were asked tonight. I'm sorry, Councilor Harris. So it, it would be in two weeks. It would be in two weeks, which would be on Monday night, June 1st, as of now. You know, we meet, we've been meeting on Tuesdays. You never know, right? But it'll either be Monday or Tuesday, correct, Chairman? It'll be either Monday or Tuesday. Yes, yeah, preferably Monday. Depends upon how long the the, uh, the, the docket looks for. Uh, and, and having these meetings remotely, we can't have meetings going on at the same time, just for those listening. Yeah. You know, and that's why this was pushed off till Tuesday. Thank you for that clarification, that helps. And then um, Mr. Chairman, if I can, through the clerk or the assistant city clerk, when is our last uh, scheduled uh, city council meeting before the summer recess? I'm not saying we're taking a summer recess, but I, I do wanna firmly establish a timeline here because I, I think one needs to be established. So when is our next uh, full city council meeting? The la I mean, not the next, the last one before um, our perceived summer break. We, we don't know if we're going on full break here. Okay, I, you know, so the last meeting is June 22nd. That is the last regular meeting as set by ordinance. So any other time you okay. would be meeting in special meetings. Okay, so thank June you, Mr. Would be the last one. Uh, otherwise, um, it is anticipated that there's a August meeting, but that would be called as a special meeting. Yes, thank you for that clarification. And either you or uh, the chairman uh, 
need to answer this. So with the time extension, how much time extension are we giving this matter with the uh, perceived out without committee reference to expedite? How much time extension are we talking about? I think that would be up to what Count Attorney Connors submits in his. Okay. He, he usually the the petition. I, I, would, I would propose Wednesday the tenth. Wednesday, June tenth. Yeah, so we'd be back in committee on June first. I, I I think that there's uh, we've addressed substantive matters. So uh, at that point, uh, I, I mean, just going through what we said and. I'm willing to hear otherwise, but at that point, I think I, I stated to Councilor Harris that it was my belief that uh, we'd be able to move forward at that time. Um, and I, I would just like to add to that, that we are here on a Tuesday and, and uh, I appreciate the counselors and attorney uh, Azadi, uh, the ward counselor, uh, Councilor McMinnon is also the president it seems, uh, making themselves available tonight because you haven't had the ability to have multiple meetings, finance going on at the same time as ordinance and rules this is a typical fashion. But um, I would propose uh, to my client June 10th, uh, like I said, uh, with June 22nd being the, the end of the council year uh, and a number of other matters moving forward, I, I would hope we would uh, have a final determination on June 1st. Okay. Um, I think that helps lay out a timeline, understand the extension. I know questions were asked of you, so those questions have to come back to committee before any motion is made. Um, I do want to thank you for your extensive testimony here tonight and kind of taking us back through the timeline of um, this matter before us. And I do appreciate uh, your patience in working with us through this time. I do want to thank the committee and also the ward counselor for coming in. Um, that's the extent of my questions. Thank you again. Nothing further, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor Harris. Uh, Councilor Dunn, you had your hand up at one point. Uh, yes, I did. I had it up and I had it down and I had it up. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, some of the questions were um, already asked by uh, Councilor Harris, but um, through you to Attorney Connors, um, might there ever be, or would your client foresee a need to use that auxiliary parking lot in the future? Or are you looking to just sell it? I guess since it was, since that was brought up in terms of a friendly taking, I'm just wondering if there are other potential uses for that lot uh, besides parking and besides building uh, more office or apartments. Is there, has there been any other discussions about what that lot could be used for? Uh, no, there haven't. And I, and I hope that the good faith gesture uh, to offer it for less than um, market value uh, under a friendly taking uh, uh, kind of puts a, not an end to that discussion, but just shows that we're acting in good faith that that's not the focus point here. Uh, obviously, um, if, if they maintain ownership of it, uh, they'll have to treat it as other assets. I mentioned the last time that uh, just just the way they work and other companies uh, that we represent, but have been in front of this council for the, the important part is that they have funds. So money comes in at different times, do you want to invest? And then assets are bought with that. So that's that goes to one of the reasons why there's different entities involved. When they're bought at different times, different funds open and close. Uh, so, uh, it is an asset. It is on Main Street in Waltham. Uh, so they'll make considerations at that time, but they, they did, uh, we did offer an appraisal of the land and uh, offer the land for friendly taking for significantly less than, uh, than that appraisal. And, and, and we do have an obvious uh, sale that's on record of the Registry of Deeds of the land that we purchased right up the road. May, the remote parking lot's 995 in the lot that we're talking about that they purchased is 1017, 1019 main uh, for $1.25 million last uh, two years ago now. Thank you. So um, back to my original question that you don't, the Davis companies don't ever foresee a need of using that parking, auxiliary parking in the future. Like, you know, should there be more tenants than parking or for some reason something, you know, changes with the 
the complexion of the tenants and they are, if it's a larger uh, mix up of, of uh, people, lot more people than they expected, would that there be a need for that? So, so as, as I'm sorry, I thought the, the first part that I tried to answer was um, if it's an asset, if there was more to be more building added, uh, that they would then need more parking. Uh, separate from um, that, I think you're saying a situation where there's not more building, um, but there's a greater need for parking. So correct. I, I, and I, and I, I, I could see a scenario where that on unfolds. Um, I, I maybe see less of it now, especially after the COVID-19 pandemic. I think people are, uh, a larger portion of people are uh, working remotely. Um, I also think that the office parking in Waltham uh, has remained unchanged for a number of years. So this is a, a the requirement is set by the city um, and there, it seems like it's it's been sufficient and there there are sites um, other than this, that um, that that really comes into play with. I, I think of a, a you're building a building with uh, parking underneath. You don't have the opportunity to have even overflow parking uh, in some areas of the city, uh, or if you're not near city parking lots, if potentially there are extra cars that they may go there. Um, so that hasn't been uh, an issue citywide. So I, I, I don't see here, and obviously the Davis company's number one concern as far as a landlord uh, is to keep their tenants happy. So uh, they would see that and, and have to answer to it uh, immediately. Uh, and they've proven that with a track record uh, of keeping tenants happy. And, and usually what they're able to do in that instance is since they do own other properties is as the tenant grows, uh, they potentially say, well, we have space freeing up in another location. Uh, potentially we could start the build out there before you have the need for it. And they shift uh, tenants from property to property. That's how it, uh, that's the plan. Obviously right now they, they have a situation where they have some vacancies and they feel uh, in, before filling that vacancy that they should make it as attractive as possible. And that's the petition in front of you tonight. Great, thank you. That answers my question. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Dunn. Um, any other questions, comments from councils? Um, so the petitioner has um, told us that um, they're gonna submit uh, Watch for extension. Um, so at this point, I would entertain a motion to table. Uh, do I have that? I'll make that motion. Councilor Harris moves to table the matter. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you, Attorney Connors. Thank you very much. Um, that's all I had. Uh, on my list of things for tonight. Are there any matters that the committee would like to discuss? Councilor Darcy. Councilor Darcy is frozen. <laughs> uh, could you take the chickens off the table, please? Could I take the chicken? <laughs> Move to take the chickens off the table. Councilor Dossi moves to take the chicken resolution from the table. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. The ayes have it. Councilor Dossi. Yeah, just a quick follow up. Um, you've received, two weeks ago, you received the zoning, the proposed zoning ordinance written by the former Ward 9 Council. And you also received the um, proposed general ordinance uh, draft myself. I also forwarded to everyone via email um, the opinion of um, attorney Azadi uh, concerning this draft general ordinance uh, because there are members on this committee that weren't on the committee last year. Um, that was mailed to us, I think in uh, July of last year, 2019. So, um, 
I, I just wanted to take it off the table to tell everyone to please read the opinion of Attorney Azadi. And also, um, I'm uncertain, and Mr. Chairman, maybe you can fill me in here. Um, has the law department reviewed uh, the zone change that was drafted by the former Ward 9 counselor? Um, Mr. Clerk, do you have that? I don't, I don't know if we, I'll have to check back and see if we got to that point. I remember that we got, the, I think we got hung up on who was going to enforce setbacks and I think something with fees. And I, I don't know if we got to the point where we did like a first reading and sent it to the law department, but I'll check back uh, through the records. Okay, thank you. Uh, I mean, okay. Councilor Dawson, you, you could do that before that. Sorry? You remember differently? Do you remember if we had sent that off? No, I don't. And that's why I, I was okay. uncertain. Um, yeah. But I'll, if you could check that before the next meeting, that would be appreciated. We'll do, Counselor. And then, and then if everyone else can um, reread the two ordinances and reread the opinion from Attorney Azadi, so maybe we could um, take some action at the next meeting. And I move to table that matter, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Council Adasi moves to the table the matter. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you, Point. Council Adasi. Point of information? Aye. Council LeBlanc? Um, actually, I move to take the chickens back off the table. <laughs> Council LeBlanc moves to take the chickens, uh, put the chickens back on the table. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Council LeBlanc. Thank you. The um, opinion from Attorney Azadi, um, was that marked confidential? And do we have to vote that out before we bring it into committee? Um, I, well, it, I, said, it said attorney pri uh, privileged communication. Are you looking to share it with somebody? Um, no, I just have it um, as a public document on our um, in committee, do we have to take a vote on that, or I mean, free to be used? Council Adasi. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't think there's anything that's um, of a sensitive nature in that document. So, if if you'd like to share that with other people, that's fine. I so I would move to um, uh, make that document public. So the motion, the motion will be um, to have the chair and the clerk review the document, um, make sure there's nothing that needs to be redacted, which I don't believe there is, and then release that publicly. Um, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. The ayes have it. Uh, Council LeBlanc, you still have the floor. All right, move to uh, lay that matter back on the table. Council LeBlanc moves to put the chickens off of the table. All those in favor say aye. 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 The ayes have it. What is the wish of the committee? Motion to adjourn. Council Harris moves that we adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Both. aye. The ayes have it. Thank you all. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night.